What's up everyone? In this tech feature, we are gonna run you through how to fix the RB's engine oiling problems. Now the first thing to talk about with RBs is the oil pump. You can either stick with a standard oil pump, you can go to an upgraded high volume oil pump, or you can go to a dry sump setup. Now obviously a dry sump's quite expensive, but it does fix a lot of problems associated with the RB and its oil surge problems. But for this video, we're gonna be talking about going with either stock or an upgraded high volume oil pump. Now there are three reasons to upgrade the oil pump on an RV. The first and most important one that most people upgrade for is strength. Factory oil pumps are prone to cracking and breaking, uh, usually due to high RPM or rev limiter, two-step and dumping the clutch, etc. We've kept a stock oil pump alive for quite a while, but you do have to have certain tuning parameters to do that. So aftermarket pumps are usually stronger. The Nitto pump has the billet backing plate, the billet gears, and there's a whole range of different pumps you can get to upgrade. And we did discuss with Jim from Nitto in an earlier video all of the reasons that make a Nitto pump stronger. So for now, we're just gonna talk about the fact that you upgrade it for more strength, uh, and you also upgrade it for more flow. The extra flow also gives more pressure. RBs love extra oil pressure. Um, the guys here at Croydon like to see 90, 100, even 110 PSI oil pressure once the engine's on full noise when it's totally warm, which means you'll often see, you know, even 130 PSI idle in, a, in an RB built here at Croydon Racing Developments. But they seem to survive better when they've got high oil pressure, and obviously they have more flow from volume as well, which is going to lead us to our next topic, which is talking about the sump. If you've decided to use a factory pump on your RB26, then you don't need to increase the size of your sump, but you do need to put baffles inside it. Those baffles, they stop oil surge under cornering, acceleration, and braking. Essentially, they keep the oil around the pickup. Now, if you go to a high volume aftermarket oil pump, then you must increase the capacity of your sump. Why? Well, it's just simple mathematics, really. If the pump has more volume, which means it has more flow, it just empties the sump quicker. And if you have a factory sump, you'll find that that pump just pumps too much oil and will empty out the sump. So you have to increase the size of it. This is a Croydon Racing Development's enlarged sump. They can add anywhere up to five litres over factory. This is a nine litre sump, and they have a baffle inside as well. Now, if you increase the size of your sump, you also need to extend your oil pickup. This extra length that you can see here just ensures that the factory pickup now sits right down in the bottom of the sump and never runs out of oil. Now, the next thing to tackle on your RB is the head restrictor. Now, your high volume oil pump has more pressure, it's got more flow, and it is just pumping oil into the head. So you actually need to restrict how much oil is getting in there, and you do that with this. This is a Nitto Performance Engineering Oil Gallery Restrictor. Uh, on an RB26, you've only got one that you put in. On an RB25, you've got two to put in, so obviously you have two smaller ones as opposed to one of these. Now, what size do you put in is the next big question. Well, the guys from Croydon Racing Developments, they like big oil pressure, so they put in a 1.1 mil restrictor into an RB26. Other workshops, other builders, they might recommend something else, but that's what we go with when you've got high oil pressure. So that head restrictor is a must do in an RB when you build. Now, a lot of people know that a big problem with RBs is they just don't have enough drains from the head back to the block, which means the oil gets trapped in the head, uh, which means you get oil starvation and you get a lot of breather problems. Now, some people will say you should drill the returns out, but the guys at Croydon saying, don't touch it. You don't want to mess with the uh, thickness of the block in any way. So what you want to do is add an extra drain. So we have the Nitto Performance Engineering head drain kit that goes onto the back of the head. Now, some people argue that this isn't a head drain, that it's actually a breather from the crankcase to the head. Well, to be honest with you, every drain is also a breather. They, they do both. But the reason why the head drain at the back is so important, if you can imagine, if there's a lot of oil in the head and you're accelerating or launching very hard in a GTR, all of that oil is gonna pull at the back of the head and that gives it a place to go. Now, an important thing you need to know is whatever you do with the head drain is don't tee in the return to this into any other lines. You've gotta give it its own fresh return into the sump. 
That means that the sump and the crankcase now have a whole new hole that they can ventilate and breathe through. And in fact, Jim from CID and Nitto has also said that they sometimes put a one-way valve on these head drain kits as well, so it will only drain and it won't breathe. The last thing to tackle on the engine itself is the baffles inside the rocker cover. There's a few different kits you can get, including from High Octane Racing, which is the one that we use, and all that's doing is stopping the oil from getting out through the rocker cover breathers to the catch can and keeps it inside the head. Now, a very important part of the oiling system of a GTR is having a good sized catch can. Now, no matter how good you build a GTR engine, no matter how good the rest of the oiling system is done, no matter how tight the ring clearances are, they will breathe, especially on E85. Most of it's just fuel and condensation and stuff, but our personal choice is to go for at least a five litre catch can on a big RB build, because they just, they need it. Now, some people put a drain from the catch can back to the sump. Uh, I personally don't do it just due to E85 contamination and stuff, but if you're keeping the car warm and burning the E85 out of the oil, you can return it to the sump. And if you're on normal 98 fuel, you can definitely return the catch can to the sump. And the last little trick that we talk about with oiling systems for RBs is the use of an accumulator. Uh, great protection just in case you have oil surge. And we did a separate feature about accumulators that you can watch at the link below. So check that out to look at the last thing to help out the oiling system of your RB. So that's it. Now you've seen every trick there is for the oiling system of an RB, you know what to talk to your engine builder about and make sure you get all the right bits.